stories like crazy because everyone has mental health and everyone has a story and sometimes they're crazy join Lori lane murphy and me adriana prosser as we talk about dealing with struggling with and managing mental health with storytellers who want to share their true life story get in the conversation with us and talk to us on facebook and twitter and subscribe on youtube now Let's smash some stigma. Today, we're talking with author and filmmaker Rebecca Shaper, who has a really interesting story about reconnecting with her brother who was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Here, let's have a listen. Hi, my name is Rebecca Shaper. In 2000, I started a documentary, and it took us 14 years to film. In 1977, my brother, Call C-A-L-L, Richmond, disappeared. He was homeless and broken with schizophrenia. He was gone for 20 years. But during those 20 years, I always knew he was alive. Always knew he was alive. And in 1997, we found each other through a miracle. And I'll explain to you how we found each other. He happened to be in Anderson, South Carolina, in the place called Haven of Rest. And they take in patients like Carl. They give them work, and they also set them up for medication. I was am living and was living in Atlanta, Georgia, during that time. My brother and this other gentleman got in the truck, and they went to a house to pick up furniture because Haven of Rest gets their money through the thrift shops. And my brother got out of the car, went up to the door, knocked on the door, picked up the furniture, got back in the car, looked at the order form, and got back out of the car, went back up to the steps, knocked on the door, and the door opened, and it was my husband's mother, Marge. And my brother goes, Marge, do you know who I am? I am Carl Richmond. <laughs> and that's when my, that's when they um, gave, called me from her house. And I drove up to Anderson, South Carolina and met Carl and we just hugged. I mean, it was, I, I still get emotional during this time. Wow. But, um, when I saw him, I saw who he was and not his disease. Mm-hmm. I knew there was something about my brother that was special. And I took him in. I said, I'm going to get you a hotel and just stay there. Stay in this hotel. And that hotel was in Greenville, South Carolina. And I said, please just stay there. I will get you help. So I got him with the Greenville Mental Health System. We got it all set up for him. They got him on the proper medication. And during that time, it just sort of dawned on me, maybe I should tell his story. So I didn't know anything about filming. I knew nothing. I knew about photography, but I didn't know about filming. So I thought, you know what? This story needs to be told. I just had that inner calling to do this. So I went to my brother's apartment and I asked him, I said, Carl, do you mind if I tell a story about your life? And he said, sure, Rebecca, absolutely. And I remember walking away and thinking, wow, that just felt like he knew that I was going to ask him that. And so the rest was history. And we followed him for 14 years. Um, I drove back and forth from Atlanta to Greenville to make sure he was okay. Um, We brought him into our family. But prior to that, my husband was a little concerned about him coming into our home because we had two daughters. And I knew in my heart that my brother would not do anything. But of course, my brother was, I mean, my husband was just being protective. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, Carl had to trust us and, and, and we had to trust him. So once that trust was bonded, we embraced him. We brought him into our life. We brought him to our beach house. We had him over for Thanksgiving. And during the time of the film, filming, I just knew that there was just 
something truly different about him. So during the documentary, we interviewed him. And I did not know this until we were interviewing. We were asking him about the voices. And he said, one day when I was on the road, I went under the bridge and this voice came over me and it said, I'm going to have to take your mother. And two weeks later, my mother died by suicide. Mm. Wow. And to me, I knew that it's, it was almost like he had a son. He knew it was as though that someone was speaking to him. It wasn't a hallucination um, and telling him what was going on. He had a premonition. And he said, I remember I never told Becky, which he called me Becky. Um, and I just, I was stunned. I was like, wow, this is what I've been feeling about my brother. I feel like that these individuals with schizophrenia, and I still grapple with that word. I still grapple with the word mental illness because I feel like these people are very gifted. I wouldn't say all of them are, but I saw it and experienced it with my brother. When he was in Greenville and we were living in Atlanta, he would pick up the phone and he'd say, Rebecca, what's going on with, with Kim? What's going on with Lauren? And he would he could pick up telepathically what was going on. I truly believe that they're very sensitive souls. And they can walk into a room and pick up people's energy. Um, they're they're highly multidimensional. Um, and we all are, but I feel like they have another type of awareness. And this is what I feel like my brother was. Um, and my daughters would pick up the phone and, and talk to him. And he never said a lot, but what he said was very profound. I learned a lot from him. I learned from patience. Um, I learned just the simple things in life. And um he brought so much joy and laughter into our house. And he was the catalyst of the film. And he was also the catalyst of breaking the cycle in my family when we were growing up, uh, which was uh, both my parents died by suicide. There was sexual abuse and there was alcoholism. But I never knew the story would continue on as we filmed that we would t talk about all this. Wow. So, the purpose of the film is to give others hope through compassion and forgiveness. In 2012, my brother passed away with colon cancer. Uh, he, it was short-lived, but we, we were all around his bed uh, at the hospice. And we played his favorite music. We put earbuds in his um, ears and we would play music for him. Um, and we gathered around him the entire time because we felt like this was such a sacred time. And he gave, ooh, I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> he, he, <clears throat> he gave so much to us and we wanted to give so much to him. And for him to have his passing very sacred and that he knew how much we loved him. Um, yeah, take a moment. Um mm -hmm. So um, it was uh, September 12th, 2012 was when he passed away. And um, so I was done. I mean, that was 14 years of filming. People came into my life for a reason to make this happen. And again, the purpose was to help others. Mm. So three years later, I had another call and I felt like it was my brother saying, Rebecca, you're not done yet. <laughs> And um, that then the book was published. I knew nothing about writing a book. Absolutely nothing. Just as much as I did with the film. But I knew it was a calm because people walked into my life to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like it was my brother speaking to me tuning into his energy and 
the book gave me another platform, another medium. And it talks about more the transition that our family went through. And because of everything that we talked about in the film, the film is very raw, uh, very authentic. Um, and it just gives us more, it gave, gave us more compassion towards others. It gave us more forgiveness. And it also talks about looking at people with a mental illness without judging them, looking at the person who they are. They want to be seen. They oh, want yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They want to be seen. They want to be seen for who they are. Absolutely. And yes. And they have so much to offer to, for us. Wow. Um, I, I, and, and right now I've, I'm in the process of doing hopefully another documentary about the voices of schizophrenia. Um, but I won't go into that right now. But um, that's amazing. This is so really, such a beautiful story. I just, I'm, I'm overwhelmed too because I think so much of of what you're saying is kind of some of the messaging that we use on our podcast is that people with mental health issues or mental illness, um, there's a gift that goes along with that. There is, I've always said that it, it gives one more compassion and patience for others. Yes. Right. And yes. To, to hear you say it, to sort of frame it that way. Um, it, 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 it is such a clear message of hope that there, there is almost beauty in it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yes. And um, you really kind of our mission is, is to give others hope through compassion, love mm -hmm. and forgiveness. And I definitely believe they're very creative souls. I mean, look at go, look at Beethoven, look at Mozart. Um, they all had some type of mental illness, but they I feel like they use their creativity through their their voices. Um, and my brother loved playing the harmonica and he loved music and he was very smart. Um, but again, yes, I, patience was a big thing that I learned from him because he would always say, Rebecca, how's your patience? And, I, and sometimes it would just irritate me that he would ask me again. I'd say, well, I'm with you. What do you think? <laughs> I just, I just, we would tease each other about that. Um, but, uh, Anyway, um, so yeah, it's it, we can learn so much from them, and mm -hmm. so yeah. Fast forward to the book; it's it's a transformation um, with our family and how Call helped us transform, and it's more spiritual, and which I couldn't really go into in the film. But yeah, and I just feel so blessed and so grateful that I have this opportunity because what I would like to say to your audience is um, I say this only because if you have fear behind something that you're so passionate about and you feel a calling, do it. Hmm. Because I, I didn't know anything about the film doing a uh, film. I knew nothing about writing a book, but I listened to my inner soul. I listened. I knew Call and I had this soul contract together, and this was supposed to be. This is why we met up again. And you just gotta have trust and faith that people will walk into your life to make it happen. Yeah, and I think that that's something that resonates with Lori and I because Lori and I have uh, have written plays. I've toured my play around my province, uh, uh, country, and and Lori's written a book, and she's also written a play about about her life experiences. And I think that there's that. I think it's really funny that that your brother's name is Call because it's like heeding a call and just leaning into a way to reach your community to 
affect change and dispel that stigma by being really authentic. Like it's, it's one of those things where we can see all these billboards of strangers and, and, and hear all of this marketing, like, you know, up here, we've got Bell, let's talk. Um, and like these messages of change rather than an, an actual authentic call and catalyst. And that's what I love about this story is that it's, it's, again, it's a family story. It's about love and connection and, and how you're, you're saying like, People just want to be seen for who they are. And like that message is so resonant. And, mm-hmm. and the more we can hear stories about that, I think it's, it's in the best interest of us as a community to lift each other up. And I, that's what I think is a really great piece of this is that, um, yes, it's a story about mental illness, but at the root of it, I just keep hearing about how this brought your family together. It broke through years of abuse and silence. Like this is amazing. Yeah. Yes, you're 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 exactly right, and and I go back and I think that I feel very fortunate, even though these situations happened uh, during when Colin and I were growing up, and I do have a younger brother too, that I, we wouldn't be able to share this with others. We would not be able to give others hope, and um, and he he brought that to me. He opened that portal for me to be able to be his voice. Yeah. He granted you capacity, like that you, mm-hmm. you thought that this was all you could feel and all you could do. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of broke open an, a, a more depth. Yes. A way, ways to help. Yeah. I really felt that with, with, again, with my brother's passing and, and also with, um, with working with people like Lori and also my own family having, uh, having issues that we're dealing with, like it just, it breaks you open in ways that you didn't think were possible. And what's at the beginning feels like hurt and pain is really growing pains to like make room for that capacity to, to be more empathetic and to be more understanding. And like what your brother kept going back to more patience. Yes. Yes, you did. You, you, you nailed it. You're exactly right. And thank you. I mean, we are so bonded with, with each other and we're so supportive of each other and we're so supportive of others. We're very in tune of other people because mm-hmm. of what we have experienced and we look beyond what that with the surfaces we can look in deep within to really try to help bring out the best in that person or see the best in that person. And that's amazing. That's amazing. That's an evolution from like where you're starting in this like terrible story of abuse and, and fear and labeling of things like schizophrenia and getting lost in that. And, and the evolution of that is something that I really hope our listeners focus in on is that things can get better. We can dispel it. It it takes love and time and patience. Yes. Yes. Exactly right. And hang in there, just hang in there because there's a great transformation and light at the end of the top tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. That butterfly kind of thing where you're like, oh no, I'm not going to be a caterpillar anymore. But it's like, but you could be a butterfly. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, it just, ah, stick it out. Put in yeah. the work. This, it, the, the pain is the growing pains and, and to and focus on that hope. Learn. These yeah. are the lessons you, it's all about. Yes, it's the lessons that we learn in life, but we got to be open and aware to to make that choice to make it better. Yeah, I like what that. I like beautiful. beautiful. It's just beautiful what you're both saying. I'm just sitting here with a goofy grin on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we're like really leaning into like the hope and 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 looking forward and and seeing ourselves outside of the pain. Because I mean, I know that we're not talking about the elephant in the room. That there there are reasons why we're we're recording remotely, not just because Rebecca is so far from us, um, to bring her story to us. Uh, but that like, even Lori and I are not in the same room because we find ourselves in a time, like a darkest timeline. We find ourselves in a place of pain and, and in that, again, that, that squish of, of being like, I don't know how to do this anymore with the, mm-hmm. with the pandemic and COVID and whatnot. And, and I think that this is a great story to remind us that, that we can look at the things two ways, Right. right. That we can we can get stuck in that darkness and we can get stuck in the cycle of abuse and darkness and I can't do anything, or we can think like Call and Rebecca and and be like there, there's patience, there's hope, there's family, and there's growth to be had in these dark moments. 
look at me on my little soapbox. That's beautiful. <laughs> this is what I need right now. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad I could help you out. Um, yes, it's, it's like and people get into that victim mode and mm-hmm. they, yeah. they want to blame others, but they, it's so important to take accountability for yourself and say, okay, how can I make a difference for myself and others as well? And like your brother, being able to ask for help and being able like, yes, I'm willing to share this with you. I'm willing to to do this with someone because again, that, that victim thinking, you get really stuck and really isolated. And I think it's really great that he was like, yeah, I, I do want to share my story with you in the world. That's amazing. Yeah. Exactly. He never came from the victim mode. Um, I remember uh, it's in the book it, uh, as well. It's in the documentary too. We're sitting, I'm just asking him questions and it was, um, it was not scripted. And I said, Kyle, how do you feel about your illness? He said, I'm, uh, he said, I'm thankful for it. He said, I'm mm-hmm. thankful for people who love me and support me. So uh, there you go. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 I love it. And how, uh, how do we hear the rest of your story? Where can we find your story? Um, you, uh, the documentary is called a sister's call C A L L it's on Amazon prime Ooh, and, you can, and you can buy the book, the light in his soul, um, lessons from my brother's schizophrenia. You can buy that on Amazon as well. Um, and I do have a website called RebeccaShaper.com, and you can go there. Amazing. And, um, it, and if anybody, I, I'm open to sending anybody a book free if they would love to have a book. I'd be happy to send them a book um, for free. I mean, I, I just want to help people. That's amazing. And like, again, in this time where we're all in our blanket forts at home in quarantine, what a better book to read than something filled with hope. Yes. And uh, I just greatly appreciate y'all having me on. And um, Toronto. Yeah. So I just got to ask, how's your weather and what's going Is there? (laughs) It's gray. It's a gray, windy day today. Yeah. We are safe in our homes um and riding this thing out at least you know for the next foreseeable future but um it's great to have the opportunity to talk to wonderful people like you so far away that are but you're still in it with us yes we're all in it together right we're all in it together for sure it's been a real pleasure though speaking with you and thank you so much and y'all stay safe healthy and balanced Thanks for listening. If you want to join the conversation, and we hope you do, come find us on Twitter and Facebook, and you can subscribe on YouTube. That's it, Stigma Fighters. And remember, your story isn't over yet, and we want to hear it.